Hello everybody, welcome back. I hope you're all doing well. Today we're going to be looking at the anatomy of the basal ganglia. So let's start by having a look at this T1 weighted MRI sequence. And before we get into the anatomy, let's just orientate ourselves in this image, see where we are, which axial slice we're at. So you can see we're at the level of the lateral ventricles here, coming into the third ventricle via the interventricular foramen. We can see our internal capsule here, the white matter tracks coming from the cerebrum down into the spinal cord, and our external capsule here. And that internal capsule is separating our chordate nucleus from our lentiform nucleus here, our putamen and our globus pallidus. And we can see our thalami lying on either side of that third ventricle here. We can see that this is the anterior portion of the scan with our uh, frontal sinus, and this will be posterior. So let's start by looking at the head of the chordate or the chordate nucleus. Now it's more accurate to call these basal nuclei because you can see they're gray matter, they're the same uh, as the gray matter, they're not white matter, and they lie within the CNS. A ganglion te technically lies outside of the central nervous system, and a gray matter bundle within the central nervous system should be called a nuclei. So let's try and call them basal nuclei. If we go inferiorly in this image, we can see that we lose the lateral ventricles, but we can still see the head of the chordate. And the head of the chordate rises now superiorly and indents that lateral ventricle like this. So they lie lateral to the lateral ventricles. As we come more superiorly, we can see now the chordate starts heading posteriorly. This is what's now called the body of the chordate. So we can see it running laterally to those lateral ventricles. Here's our septum pellucidum separating our lateral ventricles. And here we can see the body of the chordate running posteriorly. It's quite difficult to see the tail, but the tail is a small piece of chordate that now follows those lateral ventricles all the way down as we come down here to down the temporal horns and it comes right to the end of the temporal horns. So they start quite bulky anteriorly, the chordate nuclei, the head of the nuclei, and they thin out as they come into the body and then get even thinner as they come to the tail down towards the temporal um, horns of our ventricles. So let's go back to our starting image. We can see the putamen or putamen, putamen here separated from our chordate nucleus by the anterior limb of that internal capsule. And together, the chordate with the putamen is what's known as the uh, neostriatum or the corpus striatum, uh, so otherwise known as the dorsal striatum. And they act as a functional unit here. And if we go inferiorly again, we can see that the putamen starts off pretty much adjacent to the head of the chordate. And as we come up superiorly, the putamen stays out here. It's bordered by the external capsule and the globus pallidus, and it ending up there. So it's just this wedge-shaped gray matter nuclei here. Now internally or um, medially to that uh, putamen is our globus pallidus, and together these are known uh, often as the lentiform nucleus, and that's just describing its shape. We've got a convex surface on either side, a lens shape. They don't, don't necessarily act as much as a functional unit like the chordate and the putamen does, and that lentiform nucleus is just describing its shape. And the uh, globus pallidus is separated into the globus pallidus externa and the globus pallidus interna, and we'll see that better on our coronal views. And again, that is separated from the chordate by this anterior limb, of the internal capsule and from the thalamus by the uh, posterior limb of the internal capsule. Okay, so then we're gonna head our way down towards the brain stem. So we've covered the chordate, the putamen, and the globus pallidus. The next two nuclei, the subthalamic nuclei and the substantia nigra. It's those five areas that make up our basal nuclei in the brain. So a good trick here is to get to the third ventricle and scroll down until you see this posterior portion of the midbrain come out. That's how we know we're at the most superior portion of the midbrain. And T1 is not actually a great slice to look at. We're going to go to a T2 weighted scan. Let's look at our axial T2 here. I'm going to come up to that same level of the third ventricle here. You can see this is T2 weighted now. Our uh, gray matter is lighter than our white matter and we've got bright CSF as well. You can see our chordate, our putamen, and our globus pallidus. Globus pallidus is a bit darker here. As we scroll down, we will see the start, the superior aspect of the midbrain. We scroll down one more. There we go. It's our superior colliculi sitting there. I'm going to scroll one more slice actually down. 
and now we are into the midbrain. We know we're at the level of the superior colliculi because our red nuclei, which are lying anterior to this, are only at the level of the superior colliculi. If we were to go further down, our red nuclei, like we look here, disappear and we've got our inferior colliculi. This is a really important region of the brain because uh, not only is it asked a lot in uh, exams, but also clinically, we've got, our, we've got many subarachnoid cisterns. The midbrain itself is quite a complex structure. And so it's an important place to know our anatomy quite well here. So posterior to the midbrain, this is our uh, quadrigeminal cistern that lies behind our superior and inferior colliculi. Then anteriorly, these two large protrusions from our midbrain are our cerebral peduncles. So the cistern in between is known as the interpeduncular cistern. The interpeduncular cistern and the quadrigeminal cistern are connected by what's called the ambient cistern. I, I feel like a lot of people struggle with the ambient cistern and it's, it's quite simple. It's like ambient temperature, the surrounding temperature. It's the same here. The ambient cistern is a cistern that's surrounding the midbrain there. Anteriorly, we can see our mammillary bodies, which are uh, the inferior border there of the hypothalamus. And uh, anteriorly to those mammillary bodies, we can see our optic chiasm here. Okay, so let's get back to the basal nuclei. The subthalamic nuclei are quite difficult uh, to see on the scan, and I'm going to show you some later here. But we, if we scroll upwards and see where our thalami are sitting, as then we go down the image, just before the midbrain starts, we have two nuclei sitting just below the thalamus, a little bit anterior and they are what's known as our subthalamic nuclei. The subthalamic nuclei lie slightly anterior to these red nuclei and slightly superior. That's also another way to remember where they are. Not well seen on this image. Now we can see our red nuclei, and anteriorly to that, these dark patches here are our dopamine-rich, dopamine-containing substantia nigra fibers. They're paired nuclei, one on either side, and they separate our red nuclei from our cerebral peduncles. Now there's another uh, weighting that we can do to see the substantia nigra more clearly, and that's what's known as a susceptibility weighted imaging, or SWI. And that uh, sequence is really sensitive to local uh, magnetic changes. So we can see blood vessels really well because of our deoxyhemoglobin or our hemoglobin in the blood, and we can see our substantia nigra really well from the dopamine that's within those axons. Again, come to the third ventricle, scroll down, we can see our superior colliculi, we can see the red nuclei really well, and anteriorly to that we can see now the superior portion of our substantia nigra. As we scroll down further, we're going to get into the bulk of the substantia nigra. We can see, if we convince ourselves, that there's a little split between this posterior limb of the um, substantia nigra, and there should be a slight gap there. That's what's known as a, a swallow tail gap and you lose that in um, diseases such as Parkinson's. It's not well seen here. You can see again here we can convince ourselves that there's just a little swallow tail there. And as we go down, we should lose our red nuclei, but still keep our um, substantia nigra, and these now we know are our inferior colliculi. Okay, perfect. So let's now go on to a CT scan just to see what it looks like. It's quite different on a CT scan, but obviously the locations are all the same. So here we have a CT scan. I'll get us back to our point where we are, uh, have our lateral ventricles and our third ventricle. We can see now that our basal nuclei are lighter than the white matter coming through. And again, we can follow the head of the chordate, the body, and down to the tail. Now you can see that the ventricles are a bit bigger on this image. We can see that we've got our temporal horns as well as quite big occipital horns. Our lateral ventricles give off this occipital horn as well as coming down to temporal horns. We can see our lentiform nucleus here. And it's just really important when you're looking at a CT scan, often a screening scan when someone pre presents with a focal neurological deficit, if we lose this gray-white gray matter differentiation, that's an early sign of a potential infarct. And this chordate head is actually supplied by the anterior circulation, the A1 or A2 branch of the anterior cerebral artery. So it's a common place that we could see loss of gray-white matter differentiation, perhaps before we see it at the level of the cortex. And then going down into the brainstem again, it's a bit more difficult now to see the substantia nigra. It's not actually a great test to be looking at the midbrain here, much better on MRI. 
And then just lastly, I want to show you a case where a patient has a disease where the globus pallidus and the um, subthalamic nuclei, as well as a bit of the substantia nigra, actually light up on T1-weighted image. So we can see here our chordate, our putamen, and then our globus pallidus is bright on T1, coming down into the midbrain. We can see our red nuclei here, and we've got this bright uh, substantia nigra regions. And if I go to our sagittal view, this will hopefully give you a better idea of where the uh, subthalamic nuclei are. Here we are at the midline. We can see the nose. We're cutting the, uh, the brainstem perfectly in half. We can see the cerebral aqueduct coming down with our superior and inferior colliculi. So you can see the level we were at earlier, mammillary bodies, quadrigeminal cistern, um, interpeduncular cistern, and our ambient cistern, our tectum of the midbrain, and our tegmentum here. And what we can see is if I go slightly laterally, you can see our thalami here, and this bright T1 in our, in our globus pallidus coming down underneath, there's our thalamus, and here's our subthalamic nuclei sitting there. Often very difficult to see on scans, but here in this disease, we can see that it's bright on T1 coming down then into our substantia nigra. So I hope that's helped. I hope you've in, uh, gained some knowledge when you're either in a clinical setting or you're having an exam. We've just orientated ourselves here. We hopefully can pick out the basal ganglia. We've got a better 3D understanding of where they lie within the brain. So I hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you all in the next anatomy video. Goodbye, everybody.